So when the Grand Army of the Republic was fighting in the thick of the Clone Wars, they needed a lot of different vehicles and equipment to carry them through battle. Well, today we're going to talk about one of the most iconic and impressive pieces of ground hardware utilized by the Grand Army of the Republic, the All-Terrain Tactical Enforcer, also known as the ATTE. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So as many of us know, the ATTE is the iconic six-legged walker used by the Grand Army of the Republic during the Clone Wars. First seen during the Battle of Geonosis, it was still in service all the way up into the early years of the Galactic Empire. The iconic six-legged walker had a lot of really remarkable abilities, and let's just really dive into its design. Mounted to its roof is a single Firefont 04 mass driver cannon, which is utilized more like an artillery piece than anything else. We see it's really primarily effective at bombarding targets at a range, but is a really powerful weapon for close-range engagements as well if it's aimed directly at a target. It's also armed with six MAAD-21 heavy laser cannons for engaging targets that come closer to the vehicle. These heavy laser cannons were mounted with four in the front and two in the back, giving them a pretty decent firing arc around the vehicle. On top of this armament, a single ATTE was able to carry 20 embarked clone troopers within its hull, and they could be deployed relatively easily through a few different exits. The ATTE could also carry a variety of smaller vehicles on board, things like light speeders and ATRT walkers. And on top of that, because of its relatively spacious interior and significant armor, it made a perfect command post. We often see ATTEs utilized as command vehicles for Republic military units, where a Jedi General could be stationed on board one of these and command advancing Republic forces from far closer to the front than a regular command post would allow. But on top of that, it was remarkably maneuverable when it comes to traversing unique and interesting terrain. Its six legs made it far more capable than any wheeled vehicle would be for crossing rough terrain like debris. But on top of that, it was capable of scaling literally vertical cliffs as we see during the Battle of Teth. This made it very difficult to set up obstacles that the ATTE couldn't cross, with a notable exception. The ATTE does have one very key flaw, its underside. While well, later walkers that we see utilized by the Empire would be far taller, with their bellies far higher off the ground, the ATTE was far closer to the dirt. And so things like mines, which could be set off in proximity to these vehicles, did a devastating amount of damage. And the bottoms of the ATTEs were relatively lightly armored, so even a projectile fired into that part of the vehicle could be devastating. The ATTE itself was designed by Rothana Heavy Engineering, which is a subsidiary of Kuat Drive Yards, the same company that would go on to build Imperial and Venator class Star Destroyers. And Rothana Heavy Engineering designed and built the ATTE in complete secrecy, which makes sense in the context of the Grand Army of the Republic. The ATTE first saw combat, as many of us know, during the Battle of Geonosis, which was the first battle of the Clone Wars, and would go on to see action in nearly every battle of the conflict, becoming a mainstay vehicle of the Grand Army of the Republic. It became, like a lot of other Republic vehicles, an icon of Republic forces coming to liberate a world from the Separatists, which is why, when the Empire took over, they were pretty quick to start replacing the ATTE. During the early years, we do see ATTEs utilized to fill a role that seems more fitting for their name, Tactical Enforcer. We see them used against civilian populations, like on Raxus, where we see several Imperial ATTEs utilized to enforce Imperial rules on a rowdy population. This, ironically, actually makes the name make more sense than it did when it was serving under the Republic as a military vehicle. However, like all Republic vehicles, they were retired relatively quickly by the Empire, and within a few years of the reign of the Empire, they were a pretty rare sight, being replaced with newer, larger Imperial walkers like the at, -AT. All in all, like a lot of other Republic vehicles, this would become a visual icon of Republic power during the Clone Wars for basically the entire galaxy. All across the galaxy, the ATTE, like the LAAT and the Venator, were symbols of Republic power coming to liberate them from oppression. If you want to learn more about another vehicle that was a Republic icon during the Clone Wars, I'll leave a link up here to a video on the LAAT gunship. And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think it was smart for the Empire to retire the ATTE. After all, it was really effective in combat, but not nearly as opposing as the Imperial Walkers that would follow, and like I said, it's closer to the ground and vulnerable to mines and sort of IEDs. And if you have anything you want to see me cover in Star Wars, leave it down below in the comments. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.